This is a little post repair demonstration of the 1972 Kimball Swinger 1000 organ. And Onyi is gonna give us a little after repair demonstration. This organ is up for adoption. I'd like to get $100 for it. Would like to find a good home for it. It needs someone who can take care of it and it could use a little bit more work. It's not completely restored yet. But hopefully we can find a good home for this. So contact me if you're interested. This is a real twang tister. Vintage Kimball console home organ. Hopefully we can resurrect this. <sighs> Dealt with these a little bit before and they really don't have much of a value anymore. Of course if it's a Hammond B3 then yes, but these kind of 70s, 60s, 70s cheesy console home organs they really um, are not that desirable so I remember these used to be huge at one time and and, and then I remember the the uh, Goodwill type secondhand stores just being completely littered with them but anyway uh, we'll start this video off with a disclaimer this this YouTube channel is primarily dedicated to vintage television repair and radio repair uh, this will be probably the first and last home organ repair attempt video I ever make. We'll see how this goes. I am by no means an expert. I don't even know half of what I'm looking at is. Uh, I'm sure there are people screaming already, then why work on it, whatever, but here's the deal. It is simply an electronic device. It's full of oscillators and an audio amplifier, right? So how hard could that be to fix? Now getting service data might be impossible, so I probably won't even try, but here we go. Kimball. And it has the Swinger 1000, and I believe this is like a, like a cheesy drum machine type thing. But just look at the colors. Special effects, reverb, the entertainer. I wonder what this does. I believe these are called stops, right? These are all your different oscillators. It's pretty nicely built until you look at it. The inside, it's all particle board. So I guess that's one octave on the floor. There, something rings a bell where there may, may have been a tape deck here. I, I, I don't know why I think that. But anyway, this right here is a bit of a mystery. And this looks like it's a switch, but for what, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not an organ expert. I do not know how to play it. I have no training which probably means I'll be able to cut a number one hip-hop track. Pedal, accompaniment, generals, solo, presets. Oh, yeah, we can take a look at the inside here. This is... Looks like 70s American-made goodness with the worst capacitors possible. So we'll start here and just... So this is all okay, right? These are all, I don't see a lot of active components on here. There's a few transistors. But when you get to these, these black capacitors, these suck. I wouldn't be surprised if they're all open or shorted. 
These are probably okay. These electrolytics. These are electrolytics. I'm sure that's probably okay. All of these mylars are good. We have a bunch more of the black ones here. Uh, these black ones here are problematic with the red ends. And it's just layer after layer after layer of circuit board. Okay, here's looking at the inside. Is this a big bass speaker? Is that what this is? With some dampening? Looks like it. But here we go. Just more layers of bad capacitors. Look at that. That is a recapper's dream right there. Between that... And that right there, that's like a bathhouse for a recapper. I mean, that is full gangbang action. Look at that. And again, just more of these crappy black capacitors. Ooh, better be careful with that combination of words. Uh, more of them here. Okay, it looks like we have two audio amps. And when he first turned this on, uh, it sounded like filter hum on steroids. Almost like you just took the line cord and hooked it to the speaker. It was just a deafeningly loud buzz. And these amps, again, are filled with those crappy capacitors. Is this going to be one of those things where you just can't resurrect it because... Look at the quality of pots on the pedal. It's got those good quality pots. Spring reverb. Okay, power's been applied. You shouldn't turn it on before you recap it. You know what? I believe this flashes to the beat. Ooh, the hum increases and decreases when I do that. God, is there just something not connected in it? It seems like it's right on the verge of working. Wow, it has a Leslie in it. Or maybe not a Leslie, but it has a, a rotating speaker. I didn't even notice that. So it's got a spinning horn in front of this driver. So...
again, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm just doing it. I really think some service data is almost going to be... imperative with this. So these control that motor that's spinning that thing in front of this speaker. Okay, so it seems like this is working. This is magic cord. So I think when you hit this, when this starts, when the drum machine starts doing its thing, then if you do this, it'll play a repeating chord. I, I think, I don't know. I mean, a repeating stepping thing. I love my musical. But this looks like it's working. Why are we not? hearing anything out of this. So when I touch this, this is preamp. I hear hum. Yeah, when I I know all you can hear is the blambulance, but when I touch this, I hear hum. So this is the preamp solo flute, solo voicing. Accessory pedal voicing, repeater, where that blambulance be going. I wonder what this supply is for right here because I take this fuse out and nothing changes. kind of odd. It, it's really almost like it's missing a voltage or something. After doing a little research online I see these are quite common and there's a couple videos of people playing them working but uh, no repair of course and I did purchase a schematic on eBay. This is a Kimball 1000 series uh, entertainer and a schematic is like uh, service manual schematics like $15 probably crappy photocopy but you know what I never hesitate to invest in service data especially with something like this that I'm not familiar with I mean if I just had something that gave me the signal flow path through this thing it would help a bunch but I have it appears that the drum machine part is working and since there's no sound it's like the signal path is broken somewhere and I don't know if something is unplugged I noticed there was a plug up under here I, stereo headphones you know it sounds like the audio amp is working and when I touch the preamp I get a hum so it's like the signal path is broken but this thing is just layers and layers of boards and bundles of wire and my time is worth more than trying to figure this out it's actually a very cool instrument. Look at this, it does have genuine Leslie in it. That is very cool. Look at the cloth belt. The service manual on the Kimball organ came in and this is a very thorough service guide and is almost too much for me just to read but it goes through you know here are the different organs 
This goes through how the organ works. It explains, and a lot of this I don't directly understand because I don't have a bunch of musical training. Uh, of course, the transistor, capacitor, circuits. So here's a troubleshooting guide. And it's kind of interesting. This organ is totally dead. It makes no noise. They don't really... The only... The only... Uh, guide they have on totally dead is the power supply which I was sort of thinking of if we just go through this so the oscillator divider boards all keys are one note dead um, one or more octaves of one note weak uh, no vibrato or raz one key dead on all footages see they really a group of keys dead all pedals dead because this has so many redundant circuits it's really almost very difficult for the whole thing to be dead so let's get into it see here power supply organ dead causes loud hum and or blows fuses and here's a block chart of the whole organ. So, at the signal flow, flow paths through the organ. And we eventually end up here into the speakers. So we have an 8-inch Leslie and we have an 8-inch main and a 12-inch main and pedal speaker. Now I believe when I touched my finger on the preamp we had hum. Oh, there's something else interesting here I'd like to share. Troubleshooting the Model 1000 series organ. They talk about signal tracing, which is basically using a little standalone amplifier, but they talk about hum tracking or hum tracing, which is where you see us who work on this stuff touch the lower level audio circuits and listen for a hum that our body induces into that circuit and that's how they actually they actually talk about that as a viable way of injecting a signal hum tracing injects a signal into various points in the organ so that the signal can be heard in the organ speaker if the circuit between are okay for simplicity the injected signal can be 60 hertz of hum which is all around the organ when it is plugged in it cannot be seen or felt, but it can be heard when the amplifier input is touched with a finger. So, reversing the AC plug, where it goes into the wall socket may cause the hum to be louder. Hum tracing in this particular organ is useful in the following circuits. The four tremolo channels. So, we're going to do some hum tracing. So I want to start with the preamp board here because everything feeds into the preamp and then from the preamp to the reverb and then to the speaker. So let's let's hum tap our preamp board. See schematic page 9. All right, so here's our preamp board. So uh, it comes out of pin 7 into the reverb unit and the inputs are 9, 10, 12, 14 okay so 7 yes I am hearing that out of both so I said 9, 10 There is no tin here. So is the preamp board dead? Main channel A adjustment. Emitter follower. So it comes in 9, 10, 12, and 14. 
common bass preamp. That's interesting. It comes into tin. Okay, tin is back here. We get sound on seven, but we don't get anything on ten. So if a, a dead preamp would make sense why we wouldn't get anything through the whole system. And look at it's, I know the lighting sucks. It's loaded with these short-o-matic crappy black capacitors. Okay, I've got my signal tracer here hooked up to pin 7, which is coming out of the main, so let's see. Um, I'm not getting anything from the pedals, but the pedals might feed into a different channel on the amp. But yeah, I'm getting something to hold this down. That's kind of cool. Cool. Oh, that that note doesn't work. Okay, so we've got a dead key, and that was actually outlined in the diagnostic part, I think, as an oscillator. Actually, these two are dead. I could swear this one was just working before the phone rang. We don't have anything from here. Let's take a look at these. Let's see, we have 22 and 23, tibia and a company flute, and then these are inputs. Let's look, let's take a listen to 22 and 23, and it looks like 12 and 14. Okay, so I am on 23. Same thing, these two are dead. Okay, now I'm on 22. Same thing, these... No, it's these two here. Okay, I got the drum machine going. Oh yeah.
Okay, so obviously the preamp is not working because we got signals going into it, nothing coming out. That almost would suggest that there's no voltage going to it, so we should start by checking power to this board. Um, this funky beat's making me loon my, lose my train of thought. I'm just going to groove out right here. And then we got two dead, two dead uh, notes that go, two dead oscillators, I believe. Okay, so on pin two, which looks like it's light green and white, should have negative 17 volts. Measuring pin two, we have negative 17 and a half volts. So what is wrong with this board? Okay, so if I just jump over the preamp. Okay, so pin seven is that, and then pin 20 is the Leslie. So 1920. And not much coming out of that. We are confirmed that this board is a problem. So now to diagnose that board. Okay, Q4, we should have 10 on the collector, 5.3 on the emitter. Okay, we got. Uh, 10 on the, we got 10.4 on the collector, we got 6.75 on the emitter, and we got 7.42 on the base. That looks good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just signal backtrace through this amp. I'm going to start with the last transistor, basically the one closest to the output. I'm going to start with, uh, this sun is horrible. I'm going to start with right here. So I'm going to go into the base of this one, then I'll go into the base of Q3. And I'm just using a little one microfarad capacitor here, so. Okay, I hear it there. So here's Q3. Oh yeah. Okay, then what's behind that? Q2. Q2. Uh, common, this is the preamp. So they're feeding into the emitter here. So let's see, let me go into all three of them here. Q2. This has almost gotta be where our problem is. What are these 2N2222s? Okay, you've got nothing there. Okay, we got it on the collector going through. We N nothing on the emitter. So the emitter we got nothing. The collector we got signal on the base we got. N okay, on the collector we have 0.1 volt. So we have no voltage on the collector. Okay, so we were passing a signal here. We we're passing a signal here. We stopped passing a signal here and we have no voltage here. These two transistors get their voltage from the negative 10 volt source. This transistor gets its voltage from a negative 9.4 volt source. We have negative 17 that comes in and we have two filter capacitors here. We have an 8.2K and we have a 1.5K and this gives us our 10, negative 10 volts, this gives us our negative 9. What do you want to bet one of these two capacitors is shorted, pulling that voltage to ground? That's why 
uh, we have no negative 9.4 volts. I believe that's these capacitors right here and that down there is the 8.2 K resistor. On one side of the 8.2 K, on this side we have 17 volts. On this side we have uh, nothing, zero. Uh, I think these are the three filters. These usually don't short, it's the black ones, but I guess anything's possible. Well, maybe the 8.2K resistor went open. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this on diode check, which applies 3 volts to the probes. Then I'm going to just go across these capacitors. Well, that looks like that's shorted. That looks like that's shorted. And that looks like that's shorted. So we have a date code here of 72. And yeah, these two are these two are in parallel coming out of that 8.2k resistor. See this line right here, that line is the 17 volts. Look at that wraparound trace on there. And then there's your 8.2K and your 1.5K. So this, this is your 10 volt filter. These two are your 8 volt filters. Or 9.7 or whatever it was. So one of these is shorted. So using my new ESR meter, I'm going through and checking a bunch of these black ones. And some of them are... Eh, that one's okay that one's okay that one's okay this one here is totally dead totally dead so some of these are about three of the black ones are dead and maybe all they're all like five and ten microfarads maybe I'll replace them okay got these out of circuit on diode check Looks a little bit on the leaky side. Let's try this one. Yeah, that one's shorted. Here's what I did. Here's what I've done. I went through and I checked everything for ESR with the capacitor wizard, and there was only one that was open. I, I marked all of them with yellow that were good. Only one that was completely dead and wide open. These are the three filter capacitors. One of them was shorted. There were two in parallel. What I did is I replaced all three of them with two 1,000 microfarad capacitors because that's what I got. And they're just filter decoupling. Value is not critical so long as you are at or bigger than what was there. The reason why one of these was able to be shorted and not cause any damage or any smoke or fuses is because it has this 8.2K 8 resistor, 8200 ohm resistor in series between the power supply and the capacitor. So the resistor just absorbed the extra drop. So I guess initially I was right that it was a power supply problem because it shorted filter was causing one of the two voltages that this board runs on not to exist. I actually just sort of expect this to turn on and make music now minus the two notes that were not working. So let's see. Nothing coming out of here. OK, 
Okay, so does that just automatically work all the time, or do I have to turn that? Okay, let's see what's up with the tremolo amplifier or the Leslie. So we come out of pin 20, and we go straight to the tremolo amplifier, not through the reverb unit. So let's see if we got a signal on pin 20. Okay, we got a very strong signal out of 7. We got hardly anything out of 20. Okay, I just had to hit these and now I got a strong signal out of 20, but nothing out of the amp. Actually, now this is louder than the main speaker in general. Absolutely nothing coming out of the bottom amp, just hum. Nothing, just hum. But yet there's signal going in there. signal going into that amp, but just hum coming out. I wonder if the speaker's fried. I think I need to test that. Okay, we have sound on the base of the first transistor in the amplifier. Nothing on the emitter. The airplane does not count and nothing on the collector. But we do have it on the base. Okay, so we got a signal, actually, I think it's this one. We got a signal here on the base. We have nothing on the uh, collector or the emitter. What do we have, another shorted capacitor here? What do you want to bet one of these is shorted? Either that 500 or that 100. Going to have to take this amp out. Okay, the amplifier is out. I'm going to just start by checking the ESR and the capacitors. That one's okay. Now remember, if they're shorted, uh, this is not going to test that. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's pretty pretty low, close to a short. Let's try this one. Same thing with that one. Now I'm gonna use the meter on diochick. So at least none of these are open. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just use the meter on diode check and I'm gonna just see if any of them are dead shorted. This one here is climbing slowly. Same thing with that one. Okay, this one here looks to be shorted. Remember, I'm on diode check. So it's trying to charge it. And that's another 250, just like these that came out of the uh, preamp board. Okay, I cut C12 out of circuit and it's actually not shorted after all, but whatever it's connected to is pretty low resistance. This is an emitter bypass capacitor that has a 33 ohm resistor in parallel with it. This is the one that's shorted right here. This is the one that's shorted. C7, so it's killing the voltage to the first transistor. And that one is in fact shorted. Capacitor has been replaced. This one has been soldered back. This should work now. Okay, the amp is all back in. 
I expect to have sound from the Leslie Tremolo speaker here. So here we go. That is a great stereo effect and I know this camera will not pick that up but man that Leslie Intense, but now why is this side so quiet? Do we have bad capacitors on that side? That speaker sounds kind of crappy too. sound this thing got issues Let's try and address this. Does that sound right? Why is that so weak? Okay, let's try and address these two. Okay. All keys of one note dead, even the highest octave. The highest octave used is the first divider output oscillator signal. So, yeah. These two are dead across the board. Even, even here. These two are dead. Now this side is super loud and this side is much quieter. So we might have an open cap in the top amplifier board. But let's attack this. So signal tracer oscillator and buffer transistors replace the transistor that has no signal on its collector. Signal trace the first IC double divider at IC terminal. Let me... So these are the oscillator divider boards and this is the one that's not working and uh, I tried changing um, I flipped this one and this one and then of course these these two keys on the keyboard started working so um, I put this back in and now it's working I, I, I suspect those transistors a little bit the Q7 and Q2 that that package tends to be a an issue these are the divider ICs these little six pin things I'm sure those would be fun to try and get these are the tuning slugs to adjust the the tune of the organ 
the tune of the notes. So I will not be doing any of that. Let's see if it still works. Nope, now it's not gonna work. It started working a minute ago. These transistors get flaky. I've I've seen those transistors get flaky. Wait. going on here what's this oh, wait maybe I'm pulling on the wrong board Maybe I should clean this off. This looks pretty bad. Okay, I brightened that up a little bit. Let's see if that makes me breathe any heavier here. That does not sound right to me. This does not sound right either. like to take a look at this why these don't work and also why that speaker is so weak now this one is blaring loud and that's probably open capacitors okay what I'm gonna do is take a break from this for the night and we'll come back to it in the morning and I'm gonna use the uh, capacitor meter to ESR the capacitors in the other amp and then the board that they say controls the pedals is this board right here which as you can see it has a lot of capacitors well i just turned it on that's an interesting sound what do we have another failing capacitor here? That's kind of cool. I wonder if that's coming into the amp. I believe it is. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to see why, start by seeing why this one is so loud and that one is so quiet, this set over here. Um, this video has a lot of redundancy in it.
So let's see what's going on here. Why this, I think they should be equal and that one's super loud. This one is very marginal. So what I'm going to do without trying to piss the neighbors off too bad, let's get our testing rod here. Yeah, that's a little bit loud. So we'll just put that there. Okay, well I think I, I found the problem. What I was going to do is I was going to check the input voltage on both of them. I forgot that I unplugged this when I was testing the other channel. So, there we go. It definitely still leans that way a little bit. I forgot I was going to check the capacitors before I pow powered it up. Guess I could leave it off for a few minutes. Yeah, it's definitely leaning that way. The next thing I want to do is I want to try and get to these boards here and check those capacitors. I don't know if I start pulling this stuff out or that's three layers down. Okay, I'm totally riding the short bus here. These things, you're just supposed to take the two front screws out and then these hinge up. Hey, Jason J.J. Cruz. So here's how you service this. Do I feel stupid now, but like I said at the beginning of this, I don't work on these every day. So you have one layer here, one layer there, top layer, second layer. Then you have, ooh, look at all those capacitors. Then you have, look at all the capacitors there. Holy crap. Voicing. Then you have one more layer here. And this is the board major pedal keyer assembly. This is the board that is for the pedals. Cord gate, cord logic, major pedal, minor pedal, and then whatever this is. Those all look like just resistor networks. So I think what I want to just do first is pull this board out and check the capacitors uh, and for shorts and ESR. Okay, first. I'm going to ESR all these capacitors with the uh, capacitor wizard, then I'll do the diode check. These are all non-polarized, I think. Okay, none of them are shorted. This one here is a little bit high ESR. And I mean, it's like 10 ohms instead of 2 ohms. Uh, not going to worry about it. Same thing with this one. This is the minor pedal keyer. Um, no bad capacitors on this one. Since it's been turned off a while while I was checking those boards, um, I'm going to ESR the caps on this amp board real quick. This does need a few capacitors replaced. They're high ESR. They're not open. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning of this video, this, this would be a really beautiful instrument if you completely recapped it and did all the adjustments on it. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not keeping it and the amount of money it would bring would not even cover the parts. So our pedals still don't do anything. Um, one thing I would like to do is find out what's wrong with this note too. Pedal keying with magic cord off. All pedals are dead. Check 12 volt keying voltage. Press high C pedal and check for 12 volts at high C keying point. Okay, well we got 12 volts there. It's interesting when I push 
when I step on the pedals, the voltage goes down. Stepping on the pedals, stepping on the pedals, the voltage goes down. Okay, back to this signal tracer again, and it says signal trace through these transistors. Listen to this. Doesn't that sound like all the oscillators at once? God, this is annoying to work on. Anyway, um... So check this out. Now listen to this one. Isn't that cool? So they're saying signal trace through here and you can see the signal path. So I'm on the collector of Q2 right now. And then it goes into to the divider I see and then it goes out to the... So I'm on the collector of Q2. God, I love that sound. So it's obviously working. It's obviously working through there. And then it goes into pin 5 of the divider I see and comes out 4 and 3. step on one of the pedals. So obviously it's dividing. Okay, so it goes in there and then it comes out here and then it goes through these two transistors. So it should be coming out 8 and 16. Sorry, 16, 18, 21. Let's see, let's try this again. So 16. So it's coming out of here. What the hell? It looks like it's going into the cord gate board and coming out. So this is from the pedals to the, uh, whatever they call this board, the last one we're working on, to the cord gate board, and then it comes out here, 16 and 22, which it is, to accompaniment voicing, accompany pedal voice. Interesting, so this is where all your pedal control switches feed into. So let's see, where does it come in? And there's a bunch of writing on this, like it was problematic for whoever for whoever worked on this last. So it comes in through all these switches, capacitors and resistors that manipulate it and then look at someone. Did they change the value of these parts? What's going on here? But someone obviously had problems, whoever owned this manual before, with this board. So let's see, where does it come out? You know, my my eye just goes right to that. Oh, shorted electrolytic capacitor. You know, I, I just can't help it at this point. Um, where is this board? Let's dig into this. Okay, well, it goes in here, and then it comes straight out of here into the preamp board. So, let's check on 2024 
and then one. Okay, I'm stepping on a bunch of pedals right now. So let's see, 20. Twenty-four, and then it should be coming out on one and there's nothing coming out of this board and I'm looking at you right here big boy and it has 14 volts across it it's exactly what it should have so how could that almost not work it's all passive let's see it comes in on 24 it goes down and out one how could that almost not work Okay, I'm back here into the preamp because I got a very pedal. So that's a like a pedal mute kind of thing. So I got a very low level going in here to four, very low. And then let me see coming out on five. You can hear it there going in. Yeah? So, there is something going in here. From there, where does it go? So I'm back to the preamp. So from here it goes to the page 12, and it goes into 19. And here we go again with the blue writing all over everything so let me see 19 so here's where it comes in from the pedal signal in so let me find this board MRA oh great not only is the MRA board loaded with capacitors that are shorting and going open it's got these lovely epoxy dome transistors that like to take a dump and eh, maybe we'll get some action here okay so we come in on 19 and then we should have gain through, what is this, Q9. Okay, so obviously it's working there. Okay, so here's the base of the transistor. Here's the collector. Nothing. See, there's a 22K base. There's there's a note. 20 collector. There's nothing. Let's take a look at the emitter, which would probably be nothing. I mean, you'd hear something here on the collector. Uh, emitter is 4.7K. Nothing. Nothing. So we have zero volts on the collector, which is no surprise. So which one of these turd burglars is shorted? See, we got nothing there. 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 We got nothing here. We got no voltage anywhere on this board. Let's see, it comes in on 13 through a 220 ohm resistor. Through a short ohmatic capacitor. Then we got a Zener diode here to, to maintain the voltage. That could be shorted. And then we got two more short ohmatic capacitors. So let's see. Uh, check 13. So we got 19 volts on 13. So it comes in right here and then through R31. So this is interesting. We got it right here. And we jump to here, we got nothing. We... we got a bad connection here. Let's pull that board out. Wow, this has the same kind of oxidation that that uh, oscillator board had so let me clean this off I'm checking the capacitors here this one's not shorted I cleaned this off and I checked all the capacitors ESR and shorts no problems let's see what happens nope no love
Really? Okay, this is a trip. I have verified the trace is good on the board. I've cleaned the board. The header looks great. And I'm still not getting voltage to that resistor. And I've got 20 volts here. What the hell is going on with this? I got 19 volts here and I got nothing here. It must be time for a jumper wire and to let the smoke out. What's going on here? What am I missing? It's right there. I mean, it's how is it not making contact? So I'm ohming these out from the pin to the board, and I'm using the capacitor wizard because it beeps at a half an ohm. And the majority of them in the middle are not making contact. Like this whole section is not making contact with the board. And I can't see why, unless it's just a layer of corrosion on the header side and I can't see it. Yeah, I think I see what's going on here. The, the, the plastic has aged and the board has warped, so it's not pulling down on the board in the middle. God, I wonder how many of these have that problem. You know, a lot of times the board will have a slit in it, and then it'll, the, the header will have a piece of plastic that braces it towards the middle. But yeah, if you look at it, you can see that, that this, there's just nothing here. You know, or is this broken away? Maybe that, maybe that's come unglued because it doesn't appear that this header is like that. Yeah, I think that's what's going on, that the header failed. The header failed and this broke away. Let me think about that. And you can actually see the warp to the board, how the board has warped because that header failed. What I'm thinking we do because there are several unused pins. You can see tin is unused and it's just blank there. What I'm thinking we do is just drill and put a screw, a fastener, and a nut right there. I could also do one here. There's a blank space here and a blank space there. Maybe a little metal brace over the top. Here's my solution. I drilled a hole through where pin 10 that doesn't is not used is. And I use that little heat sink there for bracing. And I put a nut on the bottom. I don't think that's touching anything, correct? It is not. Okay. Got this all put back together. I like that one. Yeah, it's not a hundred percent working. Something's still wrong here. Turn the uh speaker on.
it's a funky bass. It's almost like Juno keyboard style. Yeah, we got a we got a bad speaker in the Leslie. So if I was going to take a guess what would happen to this. Because what it really needs is it really needs someone who's a musician musically inclined and also electronically inclined to main to restore fully restore it and maintain it. And those I just don't know how much of that exists anymore. I don't know how much love exists for this old electronic stuff, old analog. You know, if I had to take a guess, I would guess what will probably be the fate of this is probably someone will buy it for the Leslie and the amps, and they will make some type of custom guitar speaker with a Leslie and two amps and it'll be kick-ass and the rest of this will get EOL'd and sent to the dumpster. I just I just don't see it. If it was a Hammond maybe it might get restored but a Kimball? Nah, I, it, its future doesn't look too bright. I'm glad I was able to resurrect it. That's really what I wanted to do. I really don't want to fully restore it. Um, this, this, I'm curious what's going on there. Yeah, maybe this stuff does work. Yeah, so maybe everything is working here. Yeah, everything's working. It's all working. See, this key that this one that's not working. So let me do this. Let me set this on that key, okay? See, listen to the difference. And this is just kind of that general crash noise. So, I wonder what's going on here. Several things, it's probably a bad capacitor or another bad connection somewhere on this specific key right here. Uh, a whole bunch of these are not working. Okay, this is an oscillator divider problem because you can hear there's no pitch change. So this, this is the first, and then each one down is one of the divider I see. So, you can hear that's the same pitch. So the divider I see is not working, like this. And there's just more noise as you go down, listen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there. And then what we'll do is we'll see what we got here. We got another cracked header here or dirty joints. Definitely dirty joints and what could possibly be a cr another cracked header. Saw a failed uh, glue. Okay, 
I cleaned, I cleaned the pins. Now that one sounds like it's missing. Yeah, that one's missing. That's C. That's missing a... Okay, so let me clean C. I finally got this figured out how this works. It's simple. It's got an oscillator that is oscillating at the highest note and then it uses divider ICs to divide that note down for each footage, I guess it's called. Ooh, I'm learning. So here's C and then B and then these ICs divide it down. Pretty cool. And yeah, these gold pins are just horribly oxidized. Okay. Nope. Nope. supposed to pull it out with it running but I just did it so yeah we might have a bad divider here yeah we got a bad divider here See how it's thin on this one too? Crackle Pony. See, because this is a this set is a different division than this set here. That's why we don't hear the lacking here. Still has issues. Oh crap. What the hell. Maybe you would be better off being a guitar amplifier. Concert player. I love that bass sound. Oh, this one works now. But this one does not work, I'm going to assume, because we're missing the divider here. So, yes. Because that division is missing, this is not working.
I missed that, didn't I? Let's see, rock and roll, march, swing. Sounds more like disco. Oh yeah. You're six eight. Except that one divider, Mambo. Let's see, what is this? One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. That's your your typical salsa salsa four four bell pattern two three and four let's see slow rock Groovy. Needs training. Hey, there it is. Ready to groove it out. Oh. Oh yeah. A little bit more wood block, anybody? Wood block. do that with a little Leslie. Is the Leslie not running? Don't tell me it took a dump. Oh no, it is running. I notice if you just put it on piano, you don't notice that dead divider. So you don't notice the dead divider with it on Preset piano. How about banjo? Eh, banjo doesn't work. It's probably a good thing. How about vibes? You notice it missing on vibes. Sounds like freaking circus clown music. So, I don't know. I think it's cool, and I'm done with it. And if you stuck through this whole thing, I appreciate it. A lot of uh, various problems. I think I got a little bit too uh, convenient to just start accusing the capacitors of everything when a lot when it was really capacitors and bad connections. So um, yeah, there's a partial 
resurrection of a Kimball Swinger 1000 electric organ.